Today's video is gonna be about what I've gotten rid of so far and the freedom that that gives me. Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kate. We do mom life together here on this channel. I am a Christian mom and a foster mama, so we talk a lot about that, but I also really want to encourage you to live your motherhood with purpose. As they say, the days are long, but the years are short. I'm really passionate about mothers who want more and they don't just wanna settle and let life happen to them, but to really be proactive in their lives. So if you like that kind of content, please stick around, subscribe to the channel I would love to have you. Today we're going to be talking about my minimalism journey and everything that I've gotten rid of since starting. December 2017 I really felt convicted about consumerism and how much stuff I was bringing into my home I really struggled in the past with retail therapy and shopping to you know appease my emotions and I just slowly started this minimalism journey and I just went room by room and started getting rid of things so now I'm about 15 months into this journey living with a whole lot less stuff so I want to start off this video by saying there are no rules to minimalism I think a lot of people can get hung up on the rules and think I could never be that like it's such a hard thing to obtain. But I'm really passionate about sharing with other moms how becoming more of a minimalist person allows you just freedom from overwhelm, freedom from managing your stuff and constantly cleaning and just extra time in your day to do things that you really wanna do. So the minimalists are the people who kind of made minimalism popular. They're two guys and they live very minimally, but they don't have large families. I think one has one child, if I'm correct, and the other one doesn't have any kids, but I mean, I'm not 100% sure on that. But they define it as minimalism is a tool to rid yourself of life's excess in favor of focusing on what's important so you can find happiness, fulfillment, and freedom. And Joshua Becker, who's another kind of famous person in the minimalism world, defines it as minimalism is the intentional promotion of the things we most value and the removal of everything that distracts us from it. It's a life that forces intentionality and as a result, it forces improvements in almost all aspects of your life. So I really resonate with both these definitions, but for me as a mother with a large-ish family, I mean my family size fluctuates as I am a foster parent, but for me as a mother, minimalism is just freedom from the overwhelm. I would constantly feel overwhelmed by just the amount of mess I was always cleaning up and the toys I was picking up and the dishes. So just minimizing all of this stuff has just given me so much more freedom with my time because I'm not constantly cleaning because there's just simply less stuff. And it allows me to focus on what's really important and not going to the store to do retail therapy and just bring in stuff that I don't necessarily need. It also allows me to be more intentional about where my money does go. It frees up my money to be able to give and donate more. It frees up my time to be able to volunteer. So it's just improved me as a person in many ways. So I wanted to share with you guys what I've gotten rid of so far. The first thing I got rid of was our bed. <laughs> now this may seem like a funny thing and I'm not saying to be a minimalist you have to get rid of your bed. We have a small house, our house is a thousand square foot house, and we had this big bed with this big leather backboard and the footboard like came out this much. My husband and I were constantly hitting our knees on it and I just really hated our bed. It was broken a little bit so it was kind of like you'd get in and you would hear it squeak so you'd roll over in the night and you would hear it squeak. So I just, I didn't enjoy our bed and it's funny because when we started out our marriage, we just had mattresses on the floor and my husband was completely content with that. I was like, no, we have to have a bed. We can't be living like college students. And you know, just fast forward a few years later and that bed just didn't bring me any joy. So we got rid of it. It gained us so much more space in our bedroom because like I said, the headboard stuck out a foot and a half and so did the footboard. So it's like three feet we gained in our bedroom. There's no more squeak. It's directly on the floor now. I still have a nice little bed skirt on it. So you're not seeing the mattresses or anything like that. And I just got three large pillows for the back so you can't really tell that there's not a headboard anyways and I, I love our bed now I just love having our bed our mattress on the floor and nothing gets underneath it I'm not looking for toys and lost socks getting rid of my bed has brought me so much joy the next thing I got rid of was our two-piece dining set hutch thing and all of the fancy dishes inside <laughs> I realized that I wasn't being hospitable because I felt so overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I had. And when I was being hospitable and having people in, we both have large families. It's usually a large group. So I was getting paper plates anyways because I didn't have enough of the fancy stuff or we were outside by our pool so I'm not bringing my fancy china out there. So I realized every time we were entertaining, I wasn't using any of it anyway. So I got all this stuff for my wedding that literally just sat there collecting dust 
making me have to dust it, move things around, reorganize, but never actually using it. It didn't give me any joy. It didn't provide any value to my life. So it all went. I kept one cake stand, one set of wine glasses, which are plastic. I have two stemless wine glasses that are fancy that were a gift from Tiffany & Co, but I think I'm actually gonna get rid of those as well. Uh, what else do I have in there? A gravy dish for when we have gravy and uh, like a couple little small dishes for dips and stuff. That is the only thing I have kept outside of our regular dishes. When we are entertaining, we have paper plates. That's just the stage of life we're in. Maybe when we're older and we don't have little kids and we're not having families with little kids in to entertain, maybe I'll change my mind on that. I get paper plates that I can put in the compost, plastic cups that I can recycle, and call it a day. So I got rid of four dressers. So one dresser in my girls room. So my girls share a room. There used to be, they each had their own dresser. So I've condensed their clothes. So I only need one dresser. Then I got rid of actually all of the dressers in our room. One of them I moved into the living room to use as our dining hutch. So the top has the few fancy dishes I have left and the rest is filled with the craft supplies, learning books. Not that we homeschool, but we do do a lot of homework and workbooks and stuff with the kids. So craft supplies, workbooks, coloring books, and games. That's what we keep in there now. So I was able to remove all the clothes out of that and repurpose that for the living room. The other two I got completely rid of. One is still sitting in my house empty because my parents are moving and they're actually gonna take it because they have the bed that matches it. So it's sitting in my room empty, but it is going. And we moved, we used to have two small dressers in our nursery, one was in the closet. So we moved that one into our room mainly so I could just have a tabletop to keep my makeup. But I actually haven't found anything to fill it. So I'm probably gonna get rid of that one too. So that'll be five dressers in total by the time I'm done. I also got rid of a nine cubicle shelf in my daughter's room that held mainly books and a couple toys along the top. That's completely gone, which means I had to get rid of all of the stuff that was in it as well. An extra night table. I used to have an old night table stuffed underneath my desk for extra storage that I really never opened. So I went through and I was like, what am I actually using in here? The couple things I still needed, I found other spots for it and got rid of that night table that had two big drawers in it. All of our baby stuff. If you watched uh, my video a few weeks ago, I talked about how we are going to be moving once the current foster child in our care, once her case is resolved, we are going to be moving so we're no longer gonna be fostering in this home. And I just felt like I was hanging on to a lot of baby stuff. I kept a couple things like the rock and plate and the swing, which are more expensive items that if I end up not needing them, I will sell. But for now, our fostering journey is on a pause. We're not having any babies anytime soon. It just didn't make sense to me to have the abundance of baby stuff that I had because when I first became a mother, I thought babies needed so much more than what they actually do need now that I've, you know, 11 kids in. <laughs> so I have a lot less. I kept a few things, but most of the, all of our baby stuff is gone. Probably about four van loads full of clothes, tons of clothes. My clothes, my husband's clothes, the kids' clothes, it's all gone. My husband and I each have 25 hangers, and I know that because that's what, the, I bought new hangers, velvet ones, so the clothes didn't fall off um, and make a mess. So my husband and I each have 25 hangers hanging in our closet, and once those are full, that's when I know I need to declutter and organize again. Like I said, we got rid of our dressers, so my husband has a hanging organizer in his room, and our closet system has one thing of like mesh drawers, wire drawers, not mesh, wire drawers where I keep my gym clothes um, and my t-shirts and a few other things, but everything fits in our closet now. And we don't have a big closet. It's not a walk-in or anything. Lots and lots of toys. I originally, when I started the minimalism journey, had my kids helping with this, but you know, they have, don't have the life experience that I do. The last round I did by myself and I was like, what are they actually playing with? What have they grown out of? My kids are now almost six and seven years old. So a lot of the stuff they had previously, they have grown out of. And with our little love, who's almost two, I just, she doesn't need as many things. I'm finding she uses the things that we have so much more now. Locks, Lego, art supplies, she loves to color, and books. Like, we spend a lot of time just doing that. We still have a couple little figurines and, like, you know, books that make sounds and the electronic things. We have a couple of those things for her. But when my older biological children were little ones, we had masses and masses and masses of toys and most of them never got played with because there was just too many they were overwhelmed got rid of almost all of our adult books i have about 15 books 10 to 15 books i would say on one little cubicle of a bookcase that i have downstairs all of the rest i've gotten rid of that doesn't mean i don't like to read i love to read but i'm not the type of person to read a book more than once so to me that was just a huge 
space waster and I ha would have to clean and organize and move the books around. And yeah, I just, I'm not one to read a book more than once. So I've switched to the Kindle, everything else I get on Kindle. The odd book I can't get on the Kindle, I will sometimes get it, but I'll try and go to the library first, see if I can borrow it, or just ask on Facebook if any of my friends have it to borrow, rather than purchasing any more books. We've also gotten rid of many of the kids' books. I think kids need a good amount of books. We have two large bookshelves, kind of spills into three sometimes with books, but I've tried to buy thinner books um, and just books that really teach about topics that are gonna help them learn and grow and develop. I've gotten rid of more of the, like, super fun fictional books. Of course, we still have a few of those, but like the stories that have like an underlying value or moral being taught, like books about kindness and respect and sharing. And now that my daughters both read, they've gone to the like those first reader books, which most of them are paperbacks. So I still have some beautiful board books, of course, for our little one. But yeah, we've really minimized the amount of books. I used to, like I said, that nine cubicle bookcase was full with books, and now we have two cubicles. A ton of beauty products, makeup, hair products. I come from the beauty industry and loved makeup, loved hair, but I just realized I became a full-time stay-at-home, work-at-home mom three years ago now, and I just wasn't wearing the makeup or doing my hair or needing all the products that I thought that I previously needed. I do a very simple routine, and you can probably see that in some of my videos. I used to be a lot more creative with my makeup. I've just really pared down and been become a lot more simple and minimalistic. I still like to wear makeup, it just makes me feel better. I don't have to wear makeup. My kids will often say, mommy, you're pretty without it, you don't need it. I'm like, I know I don't, because I tell them, you know, when they ask why people make up, wear makeup, I say it's just for fun and to be creative. It's not because I am trying to cover something up. Well, maybe I'm trying to cover up my tired eyes, but you know what I mean. I've just become a lot more simplistic. I like to wear it because I like it um, and to be a little bit creative, but my looks have become a lot more simple, so I was able to get rid of a ton of makeup. Got rid of five boxes full of picture frames. I had collage walls everywhere. I love photos and memories and keeping them around my home, but I remember just looking around one day and feeling like it looks like somebody barfed pictures all over my walls. And because I had so many, none of them were really updated or anything like that. And I was just like, it is time. So I took all of my collage walls down. Uh, in my living room, I now have three of those small photo sh uh, frame shelves from Ikea where I have about three to four, maybe five on the top one pictures. And then every other wall, they have been taken down. There's nothing, like there's literally one big picture in my basement right now that I'm looking at that has a picture on it. And then I have a few picture frames on bookshelves and stuff, but I just got rid of, I used to have so many picture frames. Like it was crazy excess. Tupperware, we keep it very simple now. I hated not being able to find lids and not being able to mess match, so we use the same type of Tupperware now, the Rubbermaid locking stuff, where the lids click to the bottom. It comes in three sizes. We just have a few of each size and that's it. And then the kids have their lunchbox ones. They have one each and then one thermos each and that's all the Tupperware we have. And then we have a couple of like those Corningware where you can cook that have the Tupperware lid for storage. We have a couple of those for bigger things, but that's all we have. I used to have like two to three cupboards or drawers full of Tupperware and now it all fits nicely into one. Shoes, we each have about six to seven pairs of shoes and we, if we lived somewhere where we didn't have such a drastic change in seasons, I'm sure it would be less. But I have a pair of rain boots, a pair of winter boots, a pair of casual shoes, a couple pairs of sandals and flip flops and a pair of dress shoes and my gym shoes. So that's seven pairs for me, I think my husband has less. And the kids each have a pair of running shoes, a pair of rain boots, a pair of winter boots, Two pairs, yeah, so we all have about six to seven pairs, and that's it. We used to have two big ottomans downstairs that we would use for just storage of shoes, and we actually got rid of, oh, that wasn't on my list. We got rid of those two ottomans because there was no more shoes to go in them and nothing else to fit in them. So another two pieces of furniture I got rid of were these big ottomans. One laundry basket. We've simplified our laundry system and the amount of clothes we have, so I just found like we had too many laundry baskets. We probably could still downsize on that. Our main dishes. So like I said earlier, we got rid of all of our fancy dishes, but we also got rid of the amount of main dishes. When you have cupboards full of dishes, you aren't as apt to wash those dishes as quickly or let them sit in the dishwasher or whatever it may be because you have more in the cupboard. So now we all have two large plates, two small plates, two bowls, two cups, 
I have three mugs because I'm a big coffee and tea drinker. My husband has one travel mug that he takes for work and the kids each have one small mug for when they have hot chocolate and then we just have one set of cutlery. We've really minimized in that area. Everything fits into one small cupboard now where I used to have two full cupboards full of stuff. The baby has her own cupboard and she's got three bottles for milk because she still wants milk in the night. And she has two sippy cups and then she just shares the plates and stuff with us in the other cupboard. But she has one cupboard de dedicated to like her baby snacks and food pouches and her sippy cups, that sort of thing. I think fits into one small cupboard and it just makes it so much easier. We know like, Okay, maybe someone didn't do their dishes right away or the dishwasher is likely clean and needs to be emptied. I have a cleaning routine in the morning and the evening that I stick to now, so it just keeps me from being overwhelmed. I just make sure those things are done in the morning and the evening and we never run out of dishes. If you think about it really, if you just do your dishes after every time you eat, you'll always have one, so there's no need to have like five dishes per person in your family. Home decor, I got rid of a ton of home decor. I still have a few knickknacks, like I feel like I could maybe get rid of, but I like having them here because I like some interest in my video in the background. Otherwise, I, I know sometimes when I watch people, I'll look at what's behind them or <laughs> whatnot. So with the exception of this area, I really have like no knickknacks left in my house. And if I do, they have some special meaning, like that we got them on a trip or something like that. So all I really have now is a couple little signs, small little signs like this. I mean, maybe you can't tell from this, but these are very small little signs the size of my hand. I've got a couple of those upstairs in my living room and candles, and that is all I have. Um, and then I've got a couple pineapples, and that's it. But I used to have a ton of little knickknacks and collective things and all of that. It all went. I got rid of it all. Seasonal tableware. So some more dishes. I used to have Christmas dishes. I used to have Easter dishes. I used to have Thanksgiving dishes. I used to have Halloween dishes and I used to have Valentine's Day dishes. Not full sets, but a few things in each. I got rid of it all. I kept our Christmas placemats and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm trying to think. I don't even think I use them because I remember this Christmas like, oh, I got rid of everything. And then I realized, oh, I did keep these. But yeah, the kids, their little mugs are snowman mugs. So that, you know, is their Christmas mugs. But other than that, all of the seasonal dishes went. Totes of storage. We have very few totes left. There's a few with Christmas decorations. Uh, one box of Easter decorations, one box for Halloween decorations, and one box of memory stuff, memorabilia. <laughs> and I'm trying to think, do we have anything else in there? Oh, one that has my husband's tools and equipment for, sometimes he does, you know, jobs for friends or family or whatever. So he has one that has extra tools and he's an electrician. So, you know, wires and plugs and that kind of stuff. But with that, I got rid of at least 10 totes full of storage. A lot of it was baby stuff and clothes, um, more memory stuff that I just really didn't need to keep. But with that, we have one little storage area in our house and that is underneath our staircase in our basement. So now I've been able to turn that into a little play space for the kids and then tucked right under the stairs, we keep our suitcases in there and our carpet steam cleaner, which is quite big. But other than that, there's nothing in there where before it used to be filled, to to filled with totes, I would have to take one by one tote to get out to the totes in the back. So now I have just kept the few totes that we have left in the garage and we've used that little space for the kids for a little like secret hideout playing area. As I've said before, this is a journey and I just keep going room by room and every time I go through a room, I find more stuff that I'm able to get rid of. The freedom from the overwhelm that you feel as you start getting rid of stuff just makes you wanna get rid of more and realizing, oh, I haven't used this since the last time I cleaned this room. I thought I still needed it last time. No, I actually don't. So you're able to get rid of more. So I'm excited to see at the end of this year where I will be, um, but I'm just gonna keep going through. I would say the area of my house that has the most stuff still is my business area, but I feel like I need it. Like I have a Cricut machine and an easy press because I make my shirts. I have, you know, filming equipment because I do YouTube videos. So the stuff, the areas of my house that feel cluttered to me are my business areas, but I don't have a full office. I do have a little salon in my home where I do friends and family's hair, but it's just not big enough to be able to house that. So 
I have this area in my basement where I keep all my business stuff and my creative stuff and that feels a little bit cluttered but until I have an office I don't really know how to fix that. So we're just going to have to live with it and just keep organizing it. And the other area is journals and notebooks. I'm a huge stationery lover. I've just had to stop. I don't even look, especially at like Home Sense Winners Home Goods that stationary section, I would buy a new notebook every time. And I have a bunch of notebooks with just a few pages. I have a bunch of notebooks that I use. Like I'm a, I need to create my own journal or planner system because I can never find one that has the exact layout I like and everything that I want in there. You know, like a weekly planner, daily planner, monthly planner, budgeting, um, goal setting, like everything. I need to just create my own, which is one of my big goals for one of these days. Um, so I've actually decided to go to digital planning. I do love writing stuff down, but you can now write with styluses and digital planning. So I've been looking more into that. So I'm going to be transitioning my like stack of notebooks that is this big on my desk upstairs into digital planning and just slowly getting rid of all of those books as well as the only book I really want is my like spiritual disciplines book, which is something I've created. I'm going to be talking about that in another video, but you know, pen to paper, doing journaling and gratitude and Bible studying and prayers, like that's one area that I feel okay to have a notebook. But I, again, I can't find a notebook or a journal that has everything that I want, so I've actually created my own. So that's the one journal I'm gonna keep. Everything else is gonna go digital and I'm gonna get rid of my stack of notebooks. So those are my two areas that I need to work on. And then paper. I've shared before on my channel, paper is my biggest downfall. Um, but I have implemented new systems that are really helping me, but it's time, I've been kind of dreading it, but it's time to go through a big paper overhaul and, you know, you keep things for seven years or whatever it is, start shredding old stuff that we don't need anymore and just trying to downsize and just go through all my paper to see what I actually need to keep. Like, I know I have old bills and stuff. I mean, I've switched all paperless now, but I know I still have stuff stored in the filing cabinet. So yeah, those are my areas that I still really need to work on. And then we want to do one big um, overhaul in the garage. We don't have a ton of stuff in there. We want to park our car in there. We have a single car garage, so we only have about like this much, like a totes width of storage in there anyways, floor to ceiling. So we have a couple shelves, but it's time that we go through everything in there once the warmer weather comes and see what we can minimize in there as well. So I'm sure I'll do a video on that. Anyways, I hope this gave you some inspiration and motivation to minimize some things in your life maybe. If you're feeling like you're struggling with overwhelm and you just feel like you're constantly cleaning and you want more time back in your life to do things that really matter to you, you know, to sit down and play with your kids, do crafts with your kids, go out and do something and just not feel like you never want to have people over. All of those things I felt and I no longer feel them. So it's just given me such a sense of freedom and I hope this video inspires you to do the same. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for being here today. I will see you guys on the next video. Subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you share this video with someone you think might find it helpful and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye!